Today's how-to is all about how to buy a vehicle the best way possible. It just so happens to reconcile with, I believe, the best way to sell a vehicle. And so we're going to prepare you to go onto the car lot to understand the steps of the sale and how they apply and how you can prepare so you understand why we do what we do so we can help you do what you came there to do on that car lot. I'd argue the biggest mistake car shoppers make is skipping ahead to number five without laying any of the groundwork. But don't worry, we'll dig into that in just a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about the process and what it is. How do you get from point A to point sold? And what are the steps that you need to do it and to get there and to guide your customer through it to help them essentially make the decision that they came to your lot to make or whether or not the product is going to work for them, whatever you're selling, not just automobiles. The one that I came up on is 10 steps and it goes like this, meet and greet, qualify, land on car, six position sell, demo, trial close, write up, close, delivery, and follow up. I want to prepare you for each of those steps and what you should be thinking if we are working you through this process every step of the way to make sure that you're getting what you need as well. Step one is the meet and greet. So it's exactly what it sounds like. You walk on to the lot. I say, hello, I'm Katie Stock. Where can I point you? And you say, I'm just looking <laughs> or some variation thereof. Or so, so a lot of the times people come to the lot really guarded is what I'm ultimately going to be getting at here. But this is the step that establishes rapport and establishes a sense of hopefully mutual respect and understanding that I understand that this can be an intimidating process. I convey to you immediately that I'm here to help and that we are here to facilitate a smooth, easy buying transaction on your behalf. We recognize that you're not always there to buy right off the bat. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just an opportunity to say hello, to introduce yourself, to meet each other, and to just have that very, very base level of communication of I would like to X, Y, Z. And so all I would encourage you to do for this step is to be a little vulnerable, to communicate and convey and be transparent about what you're here to do because every single one of us, at least the, the vast, vast majority of people in my profession that I have been exposed to are simply in this profession to help and we're here to assist and here to walk you through to get you whatever you came here to get. Step two is qualify. So this isn't referring to your ability to purchase a vehicle or running your credit or anything of that nature. It is the questions that help us as consultative sell salespeople, so people who are consulting with you as opposed to just trying to force you into something for the sake of putting you into something or to sell another vehicle, to truly understand your wants, needs, must-haves, etc. And so one of the awesome frameworks that I've heard to kind of think of this is by utilizing the acronym SPACE. Okay, so that's safety, performance, appearance, comfort, and economy. So if you're trying to prepare for this qualified conversation, a lot of the time we're going to ask you what you're currently driving. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What has been working for you? What has you thinking about a new vehicle? And then potentially digging into that whole notion of space. Like, is safety the biggest priority to you? Or are you looking for a performance beast with 491 horsepower that you can just go zoom it off into the sunset in two seconds flat? And that's how you prepare for this, is you sit down and you really think and you try and identify kind of what your, what your priorities are so you can communicate and convey that. A lot of the times people can shoot themselves in the foot a little bit on this step by not allowing your sales consultant to qualify you. And what I mean by that is there's this I saw this online, therefore it will be best, and I ultimately, that's all I want to jump into and look at, because we might have a different take on things, and we might be able to connect you to, based on what you're describing, a product that fits far better than what it appears to online, 
or that there will be people who come in and I can see in two seconds flat that they are too tall for the XYZ or it's not going to be comfortable or it won't fit the things that they're describing. So this is my opportunity to, yes, of course, I'll show you what you came here to see, but perhaps it might be better to explore this avenue or at least stay open to this part of it. Because again, we're just trying to help you and guide you into something that's actually going to meet, meet your identified wants and needs that we're having the conversation about in the first place. So qualify is really important and allow us to qualify. Hopefully during that meet and greet portion, We've developed enough rapport that you feel comfortable having a conversation about where all of this fits because that, that, that's so essential to the process is understanding what you want and what you need in your next vehicle. And of course, that's a natural transition to step three. Step three, land on car. So landing on car is just identifying collaboratively a car that potentially fits what you're looking for. And so it's all right, now we have a picture and now we understand functionally kind of what you're looking for. So let's distill it down. Let's select something. It might be it, it, it might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit less in terms of equipment relative to the priorities that you set for us. But it's the opportunity to really start drilling down. OK, so if you want this, this and this, does this work for doing X, Y and Z? So. At this point in the process, it is your opportunity to kind of speak up and be like, mm, this isn't sort of matching. I was more thinking along this lines or to confirm like, yeah, actually space why all of it is that 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 vision and my vision, uh, they align. So I'm ready to kind of dig in and I'm prepared to sort of really do a deep dive. Number four six position sell. This is the time that there should be value built into the product and you should have a consultant who's connecting the dots on your behalf. So it's not about salesmanship so much, although that is a component of it. It's your consultant's obligation to demonstrate that they understand exactly how the vehicle that you've collaboratively come up with in that land on car part of the process actually reconciles with the things that you're looking for. And so they're going to show you features, bells, whistles, kind of check the boxes of the things that you discussed, make sure, all right, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm hoping for. And this actually is going to fulfill the needs that I have for this next round. And so pay attention to this part of the process. It's laying the groundwork, sometimes due to inventory. They're not going to be doing a full walk around on the actual vehicle that you'll be driving often. So they, they need to, you know, connect the dots and bridge the gaps on what you would be getting additional or scaling back on if you're uh, married to a particular color combination or uh, there's something that is very important to you that we have to secure in a different way. But ultimately, the six position style or the walk around is th that presentation to understand that the features make sense. And it's also an opportunity for you to get excited about the product that you might be purchasing because there should be a little nugget of insight, uh, excitement in this process. There should be a little bit of traction at this point of, yeah, I could, I could see myself driving this because the next step is driving it. And if there isn't that traction and if there isn't that spark and there isn't that excitement, now's a really good time to press pause, ask why, and see and dig in. Okay, this isn't this isn't resonating with me for some reason because you want to spare yourself, you, you know, why are you test driving a vehicle that's not clicking with you, right? Number five is the test drive, and it is the place that I would caution people the most absolutely where things go sideways in their shopping experience. And so we truly, you shoot yourself in the foot when you try and leapfrog over steps one through four to get to number five, because if you haven't identified the data points that you're trying to get from the test drive, you start creating all this superfluous and frustrating information. And a good kind of framework for this is start thinking about it in terms of trim to trim. If you're, most manufacturers have a base model, a mid-level model, a top model, and a top, top model, right? 
And so if you start trying to cross compare against, well, the drive on this one is like this, but the drive on that one is like that, but I drove a base one of this and I did a this one of the, it, it becomes a lot of noise in the process and it becomes really frustrating. And ultimately, you, you should be driving the vehicle that you ultimately want to purchase anyway. And if you're, if you're just hopping from vehicle to vehicle and manufacturer to manufacturer, you're, you're, you're going to burn some time and you're going to burn some energy and you're going to create sort of a, a challenge for yourself that you don't need to create for yourself if you just lay a little bit of groundwork and really understand how to get matched up as closely as possible to the actual real driving experience that you're going to have. Because I can't imagine something more frustrating than driving a top, top tier version of something with like this super studly stereo system and the adaptable variable suspension for a super cushion ride and then trying to scale back because that's not within your price point and not within your budget and finding yourself essentially having to start all over and cross compare again because you didn't distill down and drill down and identify the things that were the legitimate priorities to you. Okay. So that is the big struggle. That's the big leapfrog. It is the thing I encourage most of all is lay the groundwork before the test drive. But the other half of that is if you've laid that groundwork, what is the function of the test drive? And it's super important. Don't skip the test drive. You know, even if you've driven something comparable somewhere else, you want to reaffirm your decision because, again, we're trying to progress the, to the true ultimate decision on your behalf because you would like to ultimately hopefully have the goal of being in a new vehicle, right? So drive it and reconcile, confirm we're on the right thing. And then pay attention to the parts of the ownership experience that are going to be the most important to you. So if having an amazing stereo system is really important to you, you better be blasting that thing. If having a extremely quiet ride is important to you because the road noise on your previous vehicle drove you nuts, turn it all the way down. If you live by a super windy hill, it might not always be possible, but see if you're able to take it up a super windy hill, see how it feels and see how it handles because this is your snapshot as to how everything leading forward and how the actual ownership experience is going to reconcile with what you're ultimately trying to purchase. So do not skip the test drive. Prepare for the test drive. Know what information you're trying to extract from the test drive and enjoy the test drive. It's fun. It's that first uh, opportunity to really see what it would be like to be and own whatever vehicle you're driving. So super important step. Also relies on a lot of dominoes falling onto it before it makes sense to simply hop and hop. So please do your best to avoid that number one mistake that a lot of shoppers make by trying to blow through right to it without really nailing down what's supposed to happen. If skipping ahead to step number five is the number one mistake that car shoppers make, skimping on number nine is absolutely the biggest mistake that car buyers can make regarding their purchase experience. But we'll dig into that a little bit more when we get there. And that transitions us into step six, which is the trial close. And that is on your sales consultant, not on you, other than to decide, does this vehicle potentially work for you if the financials all make sense or if the financials are going to influence your decision ultimately that, yes, this is a possibility. It's a very real possibility for me. And so if the answer is no, stop the process at this point relative to if everything shakes out, do you want to own this vehicle? Because if you have other cars that you have to shop, non-negotiable, like I, I've, I've got to do my due diligence, great. Stop the process at this point. There's a there's a, a wonderful quote out there that says, negotiation is what happens after the car is already sold. And so if you're not sold on it, that's okay. It really is. It's okay. Uh, the, everybody has their, their, sh their own shopping process, right? That makes sense for them to make sure that they feel confident in the decision that they're making. But the trial close is all about you deciding whether or not it makes sense to move forward in that, in, in that actual moving towards ownership, buying, driving, and this is your brand new car. Number seven is the write-up. And 
it can be an intimidating process if you let it be, but really let's distill it down to its most simplest form in that it's just math. A thousand divided by 60, a thousand divided by 36, all of those numbers are gonna shake out the exact same every single time. It's also only a couple of variables, right? Where it's the price of the vehicle, trade in valuation, monthly payment and down payment. And all of these are going to kind of spit out into one sort of structure and thing. So what I would encourage your portion of this to be is to utilize a car payment calculator kind of in advance to sit down and determine what your budget and what you're comfortable paying and make sure that the price of the vehicle is going to reconcile within what you're hoping to pay. Factor in things like sales tax, registration, document fees. Uh, if there are dealer additions, uh, some places do them standard. And it's it's fine to ask. It's fine to ask in advance of your visit. And there there's going in with the expectation of any movement off of any price point to, tr to try and move forward as you select a vehicle. It, it really complicates the process. I've got plenty of guides on how to shop online on internet shopping to know that you're getting a good competitive reasonable price. I also have some information on how to understand where trade and valuation comes from and how to facilitate that conversation for yourself. But really, it's that whole negotiation happens when the car is already sold. This should all none of this should be a surprise at this point. And that that to you is what I would say is the expectation that I would manage for myself is all right, this isn't a surprise. I know where I'm at. I know where I want to be. I know how it all fits together. It doesn't have to be this big back and forth grind. Everybody hates that. We hate it. You hate it. We hate it. All we want is to present like, this is what it looks like to purchase this vehicle for you to be like, this is what I thought it was going to look like to purchase this vehicle and to just transition into the next step. Number eight is the close. And so that is where everything's been buttoned up. We've transitioned over where we know the complete picture of what the financial portion is going to look like. And we are going to transition you now into the business office where they're going to offer you products and protections that your vehicle are eligible for. They fall under three umbrellas. So it's the uh ohs and oh nos, as I like to call them. So your warranty, your vehicle service contracts, your key replacement. So all of those options. The second are your ownership enhancement ones, things like uh, your prepaid maintenance, where you're able to lock in those prices for services, prepay for those intervals, wrap it into your financing. And then the third are the more appearance and protection based things like chip protect and tint. And so you also knock out your state and legal documents when you're back there, but that's all part of the close too is what else is going to make for the best vehicle ownership experience for you in terms of those additional options and things that your vehicle are eligible to purchase. So it's essential that you kind of pay attention to those things and to think about of those three umbrellas are any of those things that will be important to you. Like for me, I will always buy a warranty on my car. I can get into I can get into the specifics on another vehicle, but I feel very strongly about that that I prefer having that product and protection. I like prepaid maintenance. I think it's a phenomenal product because you're saving money on something that you're going to have to do anyway. You don't have to agree, but you don't have to take advantage of any of them. You don't have to you know, you can sign sign sign. That's not a big deal. It's what clicks for you, what resonates with you, what's something that makes sense for you. And you, you also want to take a little bit of responsibility for factoring if those things do click into your budget and into your payment and into, the, into that factor and uh, to also really just understand what you're signing. So if you have questions, ask questions, get clarification and just know that you're on the same page that what you're trying to do and what you're understanding that what you're purchasing is what you're actually purchasing. It'll save you a lot of frustration, it will save you time, and it will make the next step that much more fun because you will not be worried, you will be fully present for it. Number nine is the delivery. And no, I don't mean to your house. It's where we pass over the vehicle to you. It should be washed and shiny and brand new and all exciting. And so if the number one mistake shoppers make is number five and all about that test drive, the number one mistake buyers make is not saving time for the delivery. So 
The delivery is that walkthrough. It's the, the how do you operate the vehicle? What are the features, the bells and whistles that come with it that we didn't get to cover in that, you know, that earlier step in the process because we weren't sure that we were going to buy it. But now that we've made the decision, now that it's your brand new car or new to you car, it is your opportunity to 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 learn and to know and to see and how to maximize your enjoyment of this, you know, very expensive purchase the majority of the time. And so the, the caution is save the time for it. We know that you're hungry. We know that you're tired. We know that, you know, we, we've followed quite a bit of the process at this point, right? That's the whole premise of this video, but save the time. 10 is follow up and that is on your sales consultant. Your only obligation here is to answer the phone when we're calling to touch base with you. The majority of us as professional sales consultants, we are going to make sure that you are a happy camper with this very expensive purchase that you have made with us. And so we'll reach out, we're going to call, text, email, whatever, but we want to connect with you because if we don't know that there's something that we need to fix, we can't fix it. And as much as it would be wonderful for every single transaction to be perfect and smooth and to, uh, to be on the same page, Sometimes stuff happens, like you signed up for something in the business office and, you know, you and service just haven't overlapped yet and you're sitting there waiting like, well, why haven't they called me? Reach out to your consultant, connect, allow us the opportunity to follow up with you. Make sure that you're having that conversation because we want you to be a 5 of 5, 10 of 10, perfect experience every single time. And if you're not there, we we, we want to change that. We want we want you to be square, all right? Uh and as an aside, I get a lot of questions on this part of, I had a phenomenal experience. How do I thank my person? Repeat business and referrals are the bread and butter of our business. And if we have followed the process perfectly, the, the, the biggest win that we can possibly get is for you to tell your friends and your neighbors and, you know, you know your cousin's brother-in-law's, you know, uncle about what an exceptional experience it came. So we're the first name when somebody thinks about being in the market for a new vehicle. So we appreciate your business. Let us follow up with you. Let us stay connected with you. And let's build a long-term relationship where Anything that could improve your ownership experience of your new vehicle, we're on call and ready to assist with.